Hi, my name is Dr. Sanaz Karami. I'm an internist based out of Newport Beach, California. Hi, my name is Dr. Sean Nikravan. I'm an endocrinologist and also an internist based out of uh, Newport Beach, Southern California. Today is March 28, 2020. Today, we wanted to discuss testing for COVID. We've had a lot of patients reach out to us asking, should they be tested? What are the options available to them for testing? Um, Dr. Nikobin, can you tell us what is the most available test right now? And what's the most frequently used test on the market? Correct, the most prevalent test available to us is the nasal pharyngeal swab. How is the nasal pharyngeal swab used? Uh, a nasal pharyngeal swab, just imagine a Q-tip that you clean your ears. Actually, it's a much longer Q-tip. Is inserted to the nostril pathway and it goes all the way back in the posterior chamber uh, where all the secretion the nasopharyngeal meat actually to be able to capture the most amount of viral load now when done correctly because this has to the swab has to go so far back it's actually a pretty uncomfortable test and patients have complained that it's painful um what have been the other uh drawbacks that you've experienced in terms of ordering this test? What has been the barriers you've so, seen? As you mentioned, the, the, the uncomfortable part of it is just a short period, but that's the first one. The second part of it is that it's not readily available to everyone that wants to test because they're holding it back for people who presume to have high risk uh, exposures, endemic areas, travel, you know, that's what they're waiting for. And the other problem- And then, you know, along those lines, I've tried actually ordering this for several patients who were symptomatic, had fever, cough, all the classical signs, and they were turned away because they didn't have, you know, travel to China or they didn't know of a specific person that was COVID positive. Absolutely. And we know it's currently community um, acquired. So at this Absolutely. point, those should be irrelevant. Absolutely. And the other, the other part of this, initially when the test came out, the turnaround time was supposed to be promised to be a little, a little bit close to 48 hours or maybe less. But unfortunately, we've seen many cases that have gone beyond five to even 10 days, which is completely unacceptable. Yeah, the latest that I've experienced for patients I've tested has been eight days so far. So that's a pretty long time to wait to know if you have COVID, if you're experiencing symptoms. Um, can you also tell us what's the method that this test is done? Now, this method uses a, a reverse transcriptase a messenger RNA via PCR was a polymerase change reaction. It's a very sensitive test. If the test is positive, that guarantees that you have it. So this is looking for actual virus particles um, in the nasopharyngeal area. But the sensitivity of this test is currently 63%. That means 37% of patients who are COVID positive, based on all the studies in China and Italy, will be missed. That's why it's important for those patients of high pretest probability who have the exposure, have multiple repeated tests because the more you do it, the more likely you'll have a positive test. Yeah, so this is what we call, this test has a high false negative, that you could actually have COVID and it could be missed because there's 37% of the population that'll be missed. And that depends on the viral load and how much are you shedding at that moment. That's why that could change actually. Exactly. Um, now, along those lines, we got some great news mm -hmm. about Abbott Laboratories got an FDA approval yesterday for a rapid um, test. Correct. Can you tell us about that? So the rapid test is very much as what we've been doing in the office. It's like an influenza kit package in which you can get results in 15 minutes. It's the same method as the nasal swab method. It uses a PCR, and that looks specifically for those uh, viral loads, which we can get results in 15 minutes because it's highly accurate and it's a uh, uh, rapid response. So we're still waiting to get their data on the sensitivities of this test. Uh, last I looked, they didn't have their sensitivities up, but the great thing about it is that it's gonna be 15 minutes and you'll mm -hmm. have results and it's actually detecting viral par particles. So if it comes back positive, that's a pretty solid um, answer that you actually do have COVID. I think it's actually gonna be released to acute care settings like hospitals, ERs, urgent cares. Correct. Because that's where the volume of this is going and subsequently, once they have more of it, they're going to release it to the practices too. So it'll too. still be a while before we get this, but you know, then since this virus is going to be with us for the next, you know, six to eighteen months, at some point this will be in the office and it'll be like a rapid flu test that we'll the have virus available. Virus keeps to you. giving back, unfortunately. Now, other than checking for the virus itself, we also have a way of checking for antibodies to the virus, the immunoglobulins. Can you tell us about that testing? So this test has been in the market very shortly, about maybe a couple of weeks at maximum. And this looks for your exposure to the coronavirus family. And it looks like IgM, immunoglobulin M. And what this is, if you are exposed to a virus, within the first five days, you get a response about 50%. By day number 10 uh, to day number 12, you get about 100% response which is within the blood. So if you've been exposed to the virus, you'll get a spike in your IgM antibodies. That means you've seen the virus. So IgM is the acute 
antibodies that you get and IgG are the long-term antibodies that your body will have a way of fighting this thing if you're exposed to it again. So that's done through the blood. The turnaround time is about 24 to 48 hours. Correct. We offer it at our office and I've heard many other laboratories are currently offering it. Correct. And now, the IgG, the IgG is a tissue antibody that usually doesn't start to show itself somewhere north of three weeks, sometimes even longer, that shows that you've been exposed to the virus that means you now build immunity to the virus. It depends on how strong your immune system is. Now, the sensitivity of this test is somewhere around 88 to 90 percent. So once you have a negative test, that's a pretty solid test. That means there was no antibodies in your uh, system and you were not exposed to COVID. But if it does come back as positive IgG or IgM, the problem with this test is that there is a 10% chance that you could be getting detecting antibodies that are to other types of coronaviruses that cause the common cold. So, you know, it has its limitations, but it also, right now, is one of the other tests that are very beneficial. Correct. I find this test very useful, uh, as you know, that it's great if you don't have the, the disease. If you don't have the virus, it's a great rule-out test. So, for example, if you want to care for an elderly or a loved one, they need help, and you don't want to expose them because they're self-quarantined for days and weeks, at that point, you want to test yourself, so make sure your antibodies are negative, and make sure you don't contact with anybody else afterwards, and you can actually go provide help to these people because if the test is negative, it's very, very accurate. Or, you know, let's say you've been exposed to someone you think may have COVID and you're five days post-exposure and you don't have symptoms, Correct. but you want to see, you know, could you have, um, you know, could you have be, be an asymptomatic carrier? Again, this is a very good test. Absolutely. Now, yeah. this test is not FDA approved, correct? Correct, not FDA approved. So currently, the FDA has um, loosened its restrictions because there is a public health um uh, emergency and a lot of these tests are able to be conducted without FDA approval but they're still following FDA guidelines and these tests have been used in other countries such as Singapore and um, China and so on. South Korea, exactly. You... And also the very important is the timing of the test is very very important because you want to make sure you test right at the right time because if you test too early you haven't built up enough antibodies and that will give you a false negative. And... Yes, five days. Five days after exposure minimum to Correct. do this test. Um, now, the next step of this test is a company called Henry Schein that's developed something. Can you tell us about? So this is very similar to the test that we just mentioned just right now. This is a finger prick test. It's a finger prick test, which most likely will be sent to the offices. And I think in the future, it may even be sent to homes. I'm not so sure about that. But that's a rapid test and you can get the results quite quickly. That's a finger prick like you just get for diabetics. You get a finger prick, put it on, and put it in a package and mail it off. Uh, to the vendor accordingly and they'll get you a result. And they may even show results pretty quickly that if you're positive or not. Like yeah, I actually heard that, you know, the we have to see exactly, you know, how the protocol is done, but I've heard that there is something where there's a positive sign and a negative sign, like such as you see for these um, pregnancy tests that you do at home, where we can get those results that quickly within 10 to 15 minutes. So this will be a very helpful test. This is supposed to be released to medical offices on the 30th of March. So this is actually coming within the next week. Um, and then after that, probably at some point, it'll be available to consumers themselves. Absolutely great. So I think all of these have a lot of great options that are going to be offered to patients to be able to test themselves because up to now, one of our difficulties has been identifying who is COVID positive. But now with all these tests coming in the market, we're going to have a much better hold of Correct. how many patients are positive and then they can self-isolate and not spread it to other people. The key is to have an accurate test that's sensitive and it's rapid. Very, very important. You need a test that's rapid and accurate so we can isolate the people who are sick to break the chain and uh, prevent the exposure to the uh, people who are not actually COVID positive. So to answer a lot of your questions of, you know, should I be testing myself for patients who are not symptomatic, if you don't have signs of cough, fever, etc., um, and you've been isolating, I would not bother testing. Um, it doesn't make sense to do serial testing if you don't have any symptoms or exposure. However, if you do have some symptoms that are questionable, or if you've been exposed to someone and you're questioning whether they could have been a carrier, then I think it does make sense to use one of these tests to test yourself and know what your risks are. Great. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the content of this video. Please subscribe to the channel for all the updates and videos. Share with your friends and your family. Follow us on Instagram and also Facebook. We'll put all the pertinent uh, leads in the description below uh, to give you more information. And we hope to keep to bring the most evidence-based information for you consistently. Yeah, we'll continue to update you as these tests, more and more of these tests become available. And reach out to us. Ask us if you have a question in terms of testing, whether you should be tested or what's the best method for you to get tested. Excellent. Till next time, guys.